John Rubenstone and Elizabeth Rubenstone. Good morning or afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Courtney Delkin on behalf of um, John Rubenstone. Nice to see you again. And your Your Honor, it's Margaret Martin for Liz Rubenstall. Hey, the two of y'all talk. We have, Judge. We have, Your Honor. We've talked at length. Um, in terms of housekeeping, this case was filed in November 9th, and Mr. Rubenstall filed his TPO on November 17th. He was served with a divorce on the 10th. We had a hearing, a two-day, almost two-day hearing in front of Judge Farmer on December 6th and 7th. Judge Farmer asked Mr. Rubenstall to dismiss this TPO, and he wanted me to let you know that he's available today to talk to you if you would like to talk about this. We have an order. Judge Farmer's available to talk to me? Yes. I'll, I'll walk over there and see him. So is that what was supposed to happen? That was what I understood, Your Honor. Your Honor, there's vastly different understandings here. Miss Martin believes that the judge said that it should be dismissed. No, what my understanding is, I was not at that hearing, but in speaking with my co-counsel, Mr. Tom Browning, uh, that's not what Judge Farmer said. Yes, he said he'd be available if needed today, but he didn't say to dismiss the case. Um, what Miss Martin, of course, has forgot to mention as well is that her client burned the house down with my client in it. And um, so here we are today and there's no custody order in this um in this order for the interveners the grandparents intervened in this case and then there's visitation yes it's very layered however currently there is no order that states dad my client the only sane parent should have has custody of the children there's nothing stating who has custody of these children the grandparents have visitation the mother is in an inpatient facility there's a pending warrant for her arrest for arson in the first once she gets released so no this was not said to be dismissed Ms. judge farmer said he would be available to speak hoped we could work something out maybe consolidate it but um we need something in there that states that these who has custody of these children the only thing protecting these children from their mother who burned their house down is this tpo stating that mr rubenstall has custody right now your Honor, I'm gonna. I, I'm not gonna waste the court's time going through all of Mrs. Glickinson's um, <clears throat> points, but I will say that the problem with the TPO is it's in derogation of an order that Judge Farmer has already entered. One of the issues being the TPO says my client cannot have contact with the children. Well, the order Judge Farmer issued last week says that my client can see the children every other weekend and on Tuesday evenings when the grandparents have the children. The TPO says that um, the parties are not to have contact. Judge Farmer's order of last week says that Mr. Rubenstall is to facilitate FaceTime calls with my client and the children. I told Mr. Browning and Ms. Glickinson that I would agree to a consent order to give their client temporary custody, but that I wanted to wait until the drug results came. We agreed by consent last week to drug testing of the grandparents, the mother, and the father. For some reason, my client and the grandparents' results are back, but Mr. Rubenstahl's are not. What I told Mrs. Glickinson and Mr. Browning is, let's consolidate these actions as recommended by Judge Farmer. Let's get these drug results back. And if he is clean, I am fine entering an order where he has temporary custody. But I have grave concerns about his drug use and I need to see those results. And Judge Farmer has entered an order to that effect. He, Judge Farmer, Carol Gillingham, emailed last week asking Ms. Glickinson, where are your client's drug results? So I am just trying to be careful and there is an order for these drug results. I have clearly communicated, and if your honor would like to see the emails where I have offered Mr. Browning and Ms. Wickinson, I will enter an order saying my client will not contact your client unless it relates to the children. I have offered to do the temporary custody after we get the, the drug results. 
it is odd to me that everybody's have come in but their client. And your so honor. that that's and, and, and your honor, I just think this needs to be consolidated. Judge Farmer has got he he we left the hearing last week and he said to everyone, I've got eyes on everyone in this case. That was one of the last things he said. <laughs> your honor, Miss Miss Martin continues to it's Gilkinson, not Glickinson, Miss Miss Gilkinson. But second of all, Miss Martin keeps talking about she has grave concerns. Her client burns the house down. My client is gainfully employed with CNN. He's done the drug testing. They went to different labs. However, I got an email from the lab yesterday stating Mr. Rubenstahl's test, two tests, his pest test came back negative, perfectly clean. The other two outstanding tests, the lab has told me, and I'm happy to send that to your honor, that they will be back on the 19th and the 21st. So for them to, you know, make assumptions that this is Mr. at Mr. Rubenstahl's hand, no, that's not the case. He did the drug testing as he was supposed to do. If these children, if there's nothing in any order stating that he has custody, mom could leave the 90-day treatment that Judge Farmer ordered her to complete or he would hold her in contempt at any time. They publish my client's address with the children in the record. Mom can just show up there, take these kids at any time, and there's an outstanding warrant for her arrest for arson. These children need to be protected. Miss Martin seems to think that her client, who's an arsonist, is for some reason she has grave concerns about the only father, the only parent these children have that has stability right now. We these drug tests will be turned over as soon as we receive them next week but the fact that they won't agree to state and and it's not contradictory to judge farmer's order if your honor looks at the very last paragraph it even states any tpo order entered so long as it is not contradictory to this court's order so your honor could enter an order in the tpo that says there is a tpo the party shall have communication or visitation based on Judge Farmer's order in the divorce case. And that is not, that would not be considered a violation of this TPO, but it literally makes reference to the potential that there's a TPO order going to be entered. Good afternoon, Judge David Sterf. I was just appointed as the guardian of litem. I'm just observing, but I wanted to let okay. you know, I'm here on this case uh, in the divorce case. So I'm just here to observe. Ms. Free, you get in touch with Judge Farmer. Sorry, Judge. Ms. Free. I will, Your Honor. Okay. Um, so the last paragraph of this says, uh, the court order shall remain in effect further written agreement of three parties or until further order is court. If there is a conflict between this order and the ex parte order entered on November 22nd, the order in 2022CB72847, this order shall control. I got stand by, let me, let me. All right, stand by. I left a message for Judge Farmer. He should hopefully call me back in a second. Imagine that he has left the building already. So <clears throat> if you folks can stand down, will it help to put you in a breakout room and let y'all argue amongst yourselves? I don't think so, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, I think, Your Honor, what would be helpful is, I mean, I, Again, I said that I would agree to an order on the temporary custody subject to his screens. And the other part of this is we have a guardian order which provides that David Seraf can come in and provide the court an opinion on custody or visitation at any time. That order has been entered. It says the guardian ad litem shall make interim re recommendations from time to time regarding custody, parenting, and grandparenting time. So, I mean, I just think, Your Honor, this is a situation where we've got a lot of eyes on this. And, you know, I, I don't think that I am being unreasonable, especially when the court has ordered drug testing, to just say, take a minute, let's get these drug tests. I, I, I just don't think that's unreasonable. And especially when Judge Farmer is asking, 
he's having, you know, his law clerk say, where is the drug testing? I, I'm just asking for that. I don't, I just don't feel like that's unreasonable. And, I, and, I already, and I've already agreed that, that we will not contact their client except as it relates to the children, which is already part of Judge Farmer's order. And Judge Farmer has already allowed my client to see the children. So a just to take this TPO and extend it doesn't make a lot of sense when we have the Superior Court judge already saying that she can see the children. Your so, Honor. If, if I may briefly, <laughs> the problem that is all correct, and I'm glad that you know um, Mr. Seraph is in this case, and he can make interim recommendations. But the crazy part is, we have all of these orders, but no order except this ex parte states who has custody currently, which obviously can be changed at any time, of these minor children after their mother burned their house down. I cannot risk these children being taken by mom who just decides to leave her inpatient facility and abscond before she, before she gets arrested by her, with the warrant that's outstanding. I cannot have that, that, that risk. Why with all of these orders do we not have something saying, yes, dad has custody at the moment. We have a guardian, he can go in and he can make these changes. I'm receiving documents and correspondence and everything from them every single day, multiple times a day. But I can't get like, I mean, anything about who has custody of these children. I think that's very important because, I mean, this woman burned the house down and now she's in a mental health facility. She could leave on her own volition at any time. And we don't know what her mental status is. She's been charged with arson once. That's one of the seven deadly. That's not done just, you know, I mean, there is a reason we are here. And Mr. Rubenstahl needs to protect these children. All we need is something stating that he has the custody. That does not contradict Judge Farmer's order in the least. So, yes, I think it's unreasonable to have all these orders, but none of the orders say who has custody of the children. Mr. Sarah, what do you think? I think I've been in the case for all of five seconds and I don't know enough about it yet. <laughs> I wasn't at the hearing. I got appointed, uh, I think after the hearing, it sounds like. I'm just here to observe if there's going to be testimony, Your Honor. Have you given them whiz quizzes yet? I have sent them my questionnaire and an initial letter. And I haven't sent them any uh, other sort of quizzing or testing. You want everybody to go do a whiz quiz or you won't hear from? I, I think Judge Farmer already ordered that they do all that. Yeah, but which which one? Because we're arguing over that when Judge Farmer called me on the phone. Well, I see the outstanding warrant. I mean, I don't know why the why everyone can't agree to continue it till you get the screens back. Is everybody here taking a whiz quiz? Somebody tell me. Your Honor, we have submitted our our testing um, to the judge and to David. Um, we are the fingernail their machine broke, so we've had to take that to a different. Um, I know that the grandparents have had to take that to a different lab, but our hair follicle has come in. Mr. Rubenstahl's hair follicle has not come in, and and Judge Farmer asked, why hasn't his come in? Everybody else has come in. And so that's the one that I'm concerned about. And what I have said to Mr. Browning and his co-counsel, I don't want to say your name incorrectly, I have said to them, I will agree to temporary custody, you know, subject to the, there being an issue with those screens. I, I agree with Mr. Seraph. Why can't we just continue to wait this week? If she says they're coming this week, we get them this week, and then I'm going to agree to enter a temporary order for temporary custody. But the TPO is more than that in terms of, you know, her not contacting the kids and all of that. I mean, 
she has a visitation schedule. That, that's why I don't understand why we can't dismiss the TPO and just put this all under uh, under Judge Farmer. I mean, he, he's heard this case for two whole days last week. So what I see here in scheduled visitation is grandparents, grandparents, grandparents. But they're allowed to take, they, if you'll read section 20 E and F, Your Honor, of that order. Okay you'll note that they can take the children to see mom during their time, which is what is happening. Also, uh, Mr. Rubenstahl is to facilitate, if you'll look, so E says, grandparents shall be allowed to take the children to visit with mother during their time with the children. That's paragraph 20 E. Yes, ma'am. And then, and then paragraph 20 F says that mother shall be entitled to two, two FaceTime calls. And it says, Father shall initiate the FaceTime call from his phone and shall not interfere with said call. And, and Judge, once again, we don't have a problem with what Judge Farmer ordered. And, yeah. and you know, PPO to be, you know, any, any communication via FaceTime with mom or grandparents elect to take minor children to an inpatient mental health facility to see their mom, well, that's in the order. So that that is what it is. That doesn't, but I mean, you can still enter a TPO on behalf of the plaintiff who his wife attempted to kill him by setting their house on fire and ordering that he primarily, he, he is the one to have custody right now. I mean, I, I don't see why we're here because nobody can, can like all of these facts that are here and they, they choose to ignore that. And, and instead point, point fingers when four are pointing back at them. And I have the email here, Judge, from the lab, actually, that states specifically the confirmation. I can email it to your honor if you'd like. The confirmation testing results for specimen ID number, and then the number will be released on Monday, 1219, and then the other one released on 1221. And that's directly from the lab that I received yesterday. So I'm happy to share that with the court as well. There's nothing funny about him. He's not concealing tests. They don't have it. I've called them twice and gotten this email. Sorry, I'm reading this thing. So grandparents are, got into the case for grandparents too, right? Yes, Earlier. Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. They, they were added as parties as part of the hearing last week. Um, and that, so they filed a motion. We had to have an emergency hearing because Mr. Rubenstahl had blocked off all contact between the grandparents and the children and the uh, and also for my client. And, and Your Honor, I'm not going to sit here and argue about, we have a difference of opinion in terms of what Mrs. I'm scared to say her name, I will say it incorrectly. Gilkinson um, is, has presented, I, I don't, I, I want to find solutions, not more problems and try to de-escalate this thing. But I have a duty, I mean, I feel like we all as officers of the court have a duty to these children. And I'm just asking to fill in this gap on the drug testing, which is something that's been ordered by the court. And I, I don't know, I don't, that just doesn't seem unreasonable to me. I mean, I made an offer to them yesterday. I've been trying to settle this with them all week. And I mean, we could have settled it, but for this one issue on the drug testing, which I just don't think I'm being unreasonable about. So um, I'm kind of reading this, and is it paternal or maternal grandparents? It's, it's the ma maternal. Maternal, my, my client's um, parents. Where are the paternal grandparents? No, no, the paternal grandparents are, those are my client's parents. It's the maternal grandparents who entered the case because, you know, after their daughter burned their house down, my client was obviously concerned and not knowing what was going on. So, yes, they didn't have contact with the kids right after that. Um, now they do. And, um, but uh, as the court can imagine, um, you know, if you're going to burn the house down and then your, your parents are, are there when it starts, you're going to be a little bit concerned about as to the safety of your children. So, um, you know, they want to say that, oh, Mr. Rubenstahl withheld, withheld, withheld. Well, their daughter burned the house down and they knew about it. So, yeah, that's, that's probably going to give you some pause for sure. I'm 
one sec. <laughs> He's not answering. <laughs> but I know where he parks. <laughs> you park there. All right, so so right now the thing is that if I give dad custody, then that'll go against Judge Farmer's order, which says it looks like they live with maternal grandparents. No, no, no. They live with dad, my clients. Okay, and but maternal grandparents have. Yeah, they have okay. visitation. Yeah. But there's but nothing. Custody. Tell me where you see something here where he's even made any kind of decision on custody. Well, it presumes that he has custody because it says that the grandparents are entitled to visitation with the children, but it doesn't really say where the children, you know, I mean, I think it says that they're living with dad at his house, but it doesn't provide that protection. Like, my concern is that, once again, mom is in there on her own volition. If she left at any time, I mean, unless until they caught her on the warrant, I mean, I don't know what she's capable of doing. I mean, once the court sees the pictures of this beautiful house that's a pile of ash, I, I, I mean, there has to be something to protect these children and to make insinuations that Mr. Rubenstahl isn't a fit father coming from like coming from the mother's council is, is quite something, Your Honor. So what I hear what you want me to do is just extend that between John and Elizabeth, not include the children, defer to Judge Farmer's order, and your next date in front of Judge Farmer is February the 23rd. Yeah, Judge. Mr. I mean, we're. What do you want, Mr. Sarah? I would throw out there why can <laughs> they not consent to extend? The ex parte, we wait for the drug results, and maybe in the interim, I can help them work something out. That would be fine with us, Your Honor. Ms. Gilkin said, What we could do if we extend if we can send you something in word, but then extending it and any special language, children reside primarily with dad, and then refer to Judge Farmer's order. Of December the 15th. And then, of course, I always like to put the judge here in the divorce, you know, makes changes as they deem necessary. And here's the deal that if uh, Mr. Sarah wants to get before somebody before February the 23rd, because something came up, all it takes is you guys call or email me and I get you on the counter like that. Yeah. Now, I don't, Judge, I don't have a problem with that. All I wanted is something that states that, you know, Judge Farmer's order, yes, the visitation schedule, that's all fine and good. That, that takes priority. But, you know, the children, you know, father has temporary custody of the children. I mean, it's, ex I mean, it's extending what's in the ex parte. Right. Correct. And uh, Ms. Coulter, that's the thing. Is it's extending what's in the ex parte, deferring to any visitation with the child and and. We can even attach Judge Farmer's uh, order on for December the 15th and e-file it into this case. And then Mr. Seraph knows that, and I think you all know that if you need to get in front of me, it just takes a phone call and, you know, I can get people in. Wait a minute. Yeah. Is that Judge Farmer's case that I'm hearing, there's a four-day trial. You're out in this case or? No, uh-uh. He does this to me. I think it's Judge Farmer that I got here. It's a four day trial. Okay. That's why he's avoiding my calls because he thinks I'm saying no back to his uh, trial. Well, I'm going to do it. Well, Judge Manning, can I just make sure I understand what you're doing? Because if you can extend the ex parte order, um, I just want to make sure you know that there are no problems because my client is visiting with the kids. My client is doing the FaceTime. Um, you know, she is in tr patient treatment. She is not leaving there for 90 days. 
So what you know, I do is I put on there a new date and I say um, amended by uh, the provisions of the order signed by Judge Farmer on December the 15th. We'll attach it. Okay. And um, he, here's what I do. It, it's kind of been the benefit on a couple of cases. Um, I'm not sure what Judge Farmer don't, but personally, when I let people do that, Mr. Sarah, I don't like to allow both parties to record the conversation if they want to, because I say, here's what was said on the video, on the chat, and all you got to do is send it to Mr. Sarah. If you say, he said this, and he shouldn't, well, you send a copy of the visit to Mr. Sarah. That's what I like to do. Last time I did that, I think somebody, it was in the news anyway, it was that same video recording of one that kind of helped a lot. So, I mean, do either of you have a problem with that? Because if mom thinks dad's saying something he shouldn't say, Mr. Seraph can look at it and say all the, you know, they're going good or whatever. But if, if I'm sorry, if dad says mom's saying something out loud, it'll protect mom. Because if she's not and she's doing all she can, exactly like she should, you saw Mr. Seraph, you'll see that, hey, all these visits are appropriate. I'm fine with that, Your Honor. What do you think, Mr. Seraph? I'm open to that. Uh... Courtney, what do you think? Uh, I believe they had asked to record it. Dad's not even there, done at the school and when she's with her parents. So, I mean, well, I just didn't think it, it would behoove, to me, it would behoove grandparents and mom to record it because, you know, I'm just saying, if you were sitting in front of me and you had every single visit recorded except for one, when allegedly mom says this to the kids, you know, pass the old whiff test. I'll, I mean, I'll I'll defer to the I guess to the guardians. Uh, you what know, do you think, Mr. Seraph? If we think somebody's saying something that they shouldn't say, then Mr. Seraph can look at this and see how well, the children are behaving towards her. Well, well, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. What I would add is, I, I don't. I, I assume when she gets out of this program, she's going to get arrested. I, I don't know that as a fact, but if there's a warrant out for her, you would think that's what's going to happen, and. And there's going to be all sorts of other issues with that. I mean, it will. Uh, do we know, Ms. Morton, I'm not telling you anything. Is your office representing her on that issue? No, Your Honor. Your Honor but her, her, her criminal attorney is here. I'm sitting in on this, Your Honor. Uh, I also filed an entry. Last name is Chopra. Um, I was also at the hearings last week. So okay. we, we well, have made arrangements. Thing with the district attorney's office and the detective involved to have this matter cleared up. Yeah, you make arrangements, he walks her in, he, as long as they call, she turns as they could have agreed to a bond. I don't know. But I mean, there's definitely probably going to be some sort of stay away conditions in the bond. Completely, you know? Your Honor. Yeah, so I'm sure once that goes, he'll walk her in. They'll have to process, no matter what, even if it's a consent bond, that she'll still have to walk in, process in and out, which will take a very long time. Yes, you are. But, but she'll get out. So unless something's not worked out, that she'd have first appearance the next day. Judge, there are a number of conditions. I, I, I do realize the bond has not been signed yet. However, the draft has been prepared and sent to us that we anticipate walking through. It would include um, GPS monitoring and no contact directly with the father. But it would not have any provisions regarding the children. That sounds like one of that sounds like one of my bond conditions. Who did you negotiate that with? Uh, ADA McCauley. Oh, okay. I'm sure Miss Lauren McCauley will be sending it to me as she typically does. And when they so. send it to me, I'll be glad to uh, sign it and send it. If y'all all have your emails in the chat, uh, you know it'll be e-filed. I'd be glad to sign it once you and Ms. McCauley does it. But so how does that sound? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep the ex parte in place with the, any deviations from that pertaining to visits, anything else. They would refer to Judge Farmer's order, which will print out and attach. That's fine, Your Honor. There, if you're looking like a deer in heaven. That's, that's fine, Your Honor, but I would be remiss if I didn't um, just state this out for on behalf of my client. Once again, he was left with the clothes he was wearing, um, no personal property, nothing for the children, no furnishings, nothing. And he's not receiving any support for the children either. And we did prepare a child support worksheet 
um, where, you know, she would pay child support, which the court can do, of course, through the TPO. Your Honor, I'm a, Your Honor we, had a, we had a status conference on Tuesday, and nobody brought up child support in that status conference on Tuesday. My client has had to take a leave from work. If you look in the order that has already entered, been entered by the court, Mr. Rubenstahl makes about $100,000 a year. My client was making about seventy, dollars but she's not making anything right now. Her parents are paying for the kids' school, which is $3,300 a month. Her parents are paying for the kids' uncovered medical expenses. The, her parents hold a mortgage on a condo that Mr. Rubenstahl owns that he could live in, but he's living in an apartment. Um, my client, you know, she has one brokerage account, which they've been spending down, but I mean, she doesn't have, I mean, her family is stepping in and they have offered if he wants to buy stuff at Target or Costco, they have offered to help with that. He's already taken advantage. He already charged, how much did he charge? He already charged a couple thousand dollars um, on buying beds. He admitted in the hearing last week that my our client paid for beds for the kids. So, I mean, that, that's not totally accurate what she's saying. So, I mean, the maternal grandparents are doing all the school, all the uncovered medical. Um, he is already charged on a credit card, which is in my client's name, thousands of dollars at all these different stores. I mean, if he has specific needs for the kids, like clothes or that kind of thing, we're, we, you know, I will definitely talk to the grandparents about it. But my client is doesn't have any income right now. Now she does have interest and dividends off a brokerage account and I have run a worksheet on that. I mean that comes out um, the totals about ten thousand a year which comes out to about five hundred dollars a month. When I ran the worksheet that was about ninety five dollars a month. I'm just complete I'm just don't understand why this wasn't brought up Tuesday at the 30 day um, and the other thing in my negotiations this week on the TPO, nobody ever brought up with me child support. I mean, how does that just come to the hearing and you bring it up? That's not how I negotiate with people. I bring up all the issues. So, I mean, if, if somebody opposing counsel had come to me and said, hey, we need some support, we could have talked about it. But I, I've never heard of that until today. And that was not in the ex parte order. I mean, the ex parte order just says everybody stays away and we have temporary custody. I mean, if she wants to have a full blown temporary hearing, you know, let's do it. I'm not going to just accept that, you know, I mean. Is there just one, there one, is there just there a one child? Is there just there, a one child? There are two children. Right. If Ms. Martin is done, I would like to respond to that though. Um, Mr. Rub Mr. Ms. Rubenstahl is the beneficiary of a trust. Her grandparent, her parents aside, they have nothing to do with this. It is her and her husband. She's the beneficiary of a trust. She made $70,000 a year and they provided me with a marital balance sheet, which shows that she has a Charles Schwab account with $145,000 in it. She can pay child support on behalf of her children. Yes, the grandparents elect to pay for the children's private school. That is an election by the grandparents out of the kindness of their heart. They elect to pay overages on coverage. Mr. Rubenstahl covers his family on his very good CNN policy, but the D'Angelo's want better. So they pay the difference in the extras. Mr. Rubenstahl was left with nothing, nothing. The clothes he had on his back, that is all. He got a hand-me-down maxima from his parents. So, I mean, for them to say, yes, he purchased in a joint account, I guess, or he was named on this card, he said he was the user, the beds from Costco for the children. Because, yes, they didn't offer to help with that. They came out with a basket of laundry full of some kids' clothes after it happened, and that was it. So, uh, the stories are quite different as to what transpired here. But we are asking, as a TPO, you go to a TPO hearing and you ask for support to be entered. And we did the worksheet with $100,000 for Mr. Rubenstahl, $70,000 for Ms. Rubenstahl, and I think $95 that he pays monthly the children's portion out of his CNN uh, paycheck. And it was $938, which she can absolutely pay out of her $145,000 Charles Schwab account.
sitting there real quiet, Mr. Sarah. I feel like I'm the guardian judge. I don't care about money. My money. I don't get involved in the money. Also, to also throw it out there, Your Honor, we haven't gotten any attorney's fees in this, but the D'Angelo's are paying for their daughter's fees, their fees. They have like six attorneys on deck, and Mr. Rubenstahl is borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, me being Paul. So he doesn't have money for this. I get, I get letters, multiple letters a day from them expecting responses, letters for simple questions. I mean, this, this litigation is going to just continue to be completely... Um, I mean, it's it, it just expanded unnecessarily and it's going to continue that way because they're paying for all the attorneys for them. So um, well, all I will say, Your Honor, this is not really, for, you know, this has been one of those cases where I asked out of the gate for a guardian. The day I talked to opposing counsel, no, we had to have a hearing on that. We asked for the grandparents to intervene. No, we had to have a hearing on that. Court granted it. We ask for time for the grandparents. Courtney, no, no. So we had to have a hearing on that. We asked for our client just to be able to have a phone call with the kids. No. So we had to have a hearing on that. So I take great offense to somebody saying that I have expanded the litigation when my very first phone call and letter to opposing counsel asked for these things. And we have had to litigate for two days just to get a guardian which if a case needed a guardian, this is the case. So I take great offense to expanding the litigation because that is the last thing that I have done in this case. I have said from day one, I want solutions and I want to help these precious children. And I stand by that. And I take to her wishes for her client who once again is not even in the picture. So if I, because we didn't concede to Miss Martin's demands, then that is why she that oh she didn't expand the litigation. Either way, they have an unlimited piggy bank for their attorney's fees. Mr. Rubenstahl has nothing. Well, Miss the hearing, he indicated that he had all of his family and cousins and people, you know, contributing to his you know situation. I mean, it's just but all all families are all on deck. I think at this point. There's some people on deck for these kids. <clears throat> so I'm going to extend the ex parte. I'll refer to Judge Farmer's order. Um, is Gilkinson where? Is, you don't have to give me the address. Where is he staying? The family? Hotel? So he obtained a townhouse um, close to his sister at the rate of, I think, $2,200 a month or something like that he has to pay. And the, and the house that they reference, the apartment, it, it, it's his premarital apartment that's downtown in like right across from CNN. It's not where you raise a two-year-old and a four-year-old. So it's being rented out right now, which is why he obtained a, a townhouse in, in Dunwoody. So, so how were they splitting up the bills before? Uh, Honestly, Judge, I mean, I think that they both, I mean, they both work, made, you know, $170,000 that the grandparents paid for the house. So they were quite lucky with that. They didn't have a mortgage they paid on. It was the bank of the D'Angelo's. Um, and I mean, they, as far as I know, they split expenses and, and, and paid their bills out of, you know, a split account. I know that they used her Charles Schwab account. My client states that prior to this 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 fire, uh, there was three or four hundred thousand dollars in it. So he, he was surprised that it was down to one forty five. All right, everybody on here is just the uh, Rubenstall case, right? Yes, Your Honor. You too, Mr. Miller. Yes, Your Honor. I'm in both. I'm only on this computer in case there was evidence that was needed so I could screen share it and make it easier for everybody. All right, hold on. I'm moving some of these people in there to speak with Ms. Free. Hello. Hello. John. No, Y'all go into the other room. All right. <clears throat> so we're all gonna be professional here. Okay. These aren't our children. We're not the one getting a divorce. 
we all get along. It's horrible about the children. So we'll set our emotions aside and we'll zealously advocate. Okay, however. Judge Farmer's ignoring my call, which means he's gonna to try to shift this to me. Ms. Freed, make no, this is handy. This case right here does not come back in front of me. I don't know how he could be. But, all right, I agree. I'll know, he's pay, now, if grandparents are being phenomenal grandparents and paying for something, this child is the birthday coach, is Mr. Rubenstall, Ms. Rubenstall, you two had the baby. Neither one of y'all called and said, ask anybody else on the face of this earth if they would be glad to pay for a baby or take care of a baby if y'all had it. Y'all had it together. Right? I don't get anybody giving a thumbs up or nothing. I mean, no. My client's the only one here, Your Honor, I think. So, yes, John is. Where'd your client go, Ms. Cutler? Oh, he was she's never here. Yeah, that's right. So, that's it. I didn't get a phone call. Y'all didn't get a phone call. It's the two of them. So, both of y'all need to pay for it because it's not grandma and grandpa's you know, responsibility. So everybody needs a little skin in the game. And I tell you what, if it's not for their business, they probably have the grandparents are probably going to hook them up with college. Y'all can put it in a savings account. Put it, open up a savings account. Okay. Coming back, this was good. But late. Okay. You can open up a 529. You can open up a savings account for each kid. And y'all can both put the same amount. And she can put it in the savings account. What she pays into a, a savings account. Yeah, just to be clear, the children already have trust. They're provided I understand for. That, but just because you got a trust doesn't mean you're still not responsible. What happens if the trust, something happens to it? I mean, I got a trust too. Trust me, I ain't got no money. <laughs> okay. But stuff happens. So what if it happens? So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not sure, but you know what? Give a little savings account. So let's cut. How much uh, does your client want to put in a savings? It seems like a good six hundred dollars a month would be good for a savings account. And if something comes up and it's extracurriculars, or the child gets sick, now both have access. They both you know have some access, so they can both see it. But you know, out of pockets will be paid up for that. Because it ain't on the grandparents. What's wrong with that? Yeah, you're sorry. right. Sorry, the, I just I just need to be clear just for my client so that he knows that I, I'm absolutely trying. He has had to borrow. He doesn't have money to pay all of his bills. He has had to borrow from his parents. He had to go and get a new house. The children have hundreds of thousands of dollars in their trust account. This is a very wealthy family. My but client is at a is very. It, what is it you're wanting then? Her to give him the five thousand dollars? What is it you're wanting? Because obviously, would, if they've got more in a trust, then you don't. The kids don't need money. I was asking for the child support in the amount of nine hundred and thirty-eight dollars a month, pursuant to the worksheet from mom, so that father can provide the necessities for the children. Yes, the grandparents pay for the, you know, the, the school and things like that. But I mean. That's not day in and day out support that, you know, the commission has seen that what it costs to raise a child. And I mean, he's been off on leave from his job since the house was burned down and, and he needs to go back soon. But I mean, he's, it's been, it's been a struggle when he doesn't come from money like Miss D'Angelo, like Miss Rubenstahl does. It's, it's quite, it's quite, uh, the parody is not there, Judge. Let's go. It's free. Why are these people coming back in here? Ah, uh, tell them they were free to leave. They just did leave break out room and not leave. Okay. Miss <laughs> Cooper. Uh, it's Miss Martin. It's Miss Martin. I know it says oh, yeah. on the, that's uh, fine. That's the, that's the name of the firm. It's, it's just it's just because it's Mr. Cutler. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. the name of the firm. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I should yeah, I should change it. <laughs> it's Margaret Martin. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So, I mean, what was the mortgage at the place that's burned to the ground? 
Well, see, Your Honor, the, the parents hold the mortgage, and so were they making minimal mortgage payments? My understanding was about <laughs> once a year minimal mortgage payments, but as Your Honor can imagine, when your parents own the note, it wasn't a traditional monthly mortgage. And they also hold the note on uh, Mr. Rubenstahl's condo, which they could call, but they're not going to. Um, they also hold a note on his car. I mean, you know, they pay the education. I mean, we will pay some child support, but I just, um, my client just is not working right now. And I mean, if she pays it, it's going to be from this account. So, you know, that's going to have to come off the assets. It'll be divided in the divorce. So I just, I want everybody aware of that. I mean, she'll be paying it. I mean, child support doesn't come off the assets and stuff like that. So, so where he's staying, grandparents own. Well, that, no, well, he owns a condo that the grandparents own. He's not staying there. Oh, because that was the one near CNN. Correct. But you're, what I'm saying, Your Honor, is my client makes seventy thousand dollars a year, but she's not making anything now because she's in a rehab. I mean, she's in a you know Skyland Trail for mental illness. Um, what does she draw? Of her trust what's her trust draw? so she has off this account that i'm telling you interest in dividends of ten thousand dollars a year and i ran the worksheet on that and it came up to like a hundred dollars a month because that's five hundred dollars a month i'm not aware of any other trust where she's been taking distributions all i know is that her parents have given the the, the money or given her money for them to live during the marriage um but that's not i mean that's just they give her money as needed kind of thing just to help fill in the gap but that was not from my client that was from her the maternal grandparents so i mean their balance sheet i mean i just you know if if your honor orders child support and i hear what you're saying i mean they, they're the parents but it's going to come from this account. And I just don't want to hear later that we dissipated the marital estate. I don't want to hear arguments from opposing counsel that we've dissipated the estate if she pays that child support from this Charles Schwab account. All right. Yeah. <laughs> right. The $70,000 that she was getting was work. Murphy yes, Hall. Your Honor, but she's yeah. not working now. All right, and then her parents were pretty much paying all the bills, plus she got an extra 10000 a year. Well, she has interest in dividends off that account that and shows, I mean, I just went to her tax returns and she had interest in dividends off that account of, well, that's the capital gains, so no, that wasn't right. But, but her parents paid for their house note and all their other bills. Well, their parent. the point is they didn't pay for the house note. They hold the mortgage. They just didn't make many mortgage payments. Their parents would give them money to go into a joint account. Um, and my understanding is Mr. Rubenstahl would pay, you know, buy whatever he wanted to buy for the house or whatever he wanted to do. Then he'd put whatever was left from his earnings in the joint account. My client would put her earnings in the joint account, and then the grandparents would supplement with cash, and the bills were paid out of that account. So the sources for the joint account were my client's income from work, which is no longer for right now, Mr. Rubenstahl's income from work, and cash flow from the grandparents. In addition to that, the grandparents are paying the $3,300 a month for education, the uncovered medical expenses and you know I know they bought the kids clothes and that kind of thing I mean you know um, but right now they're continuing to pay the thirty three hundred dollars a month for which is essentially the the children can stay there till five o'clock I understand that's what Mr. Rubenstahl has been doing so that's covering a lot of the day I think they have lunch at school um, the, the grandparents and my client have the kids every other weekend and one night during the week. So, you know, those the, during those times, he doesn't have expenses for the kids. Okay. So, I mean, I think you're talking about food and, and we'll buy the kids' clothes. I mean, you I know, guess what I, worried about, I guess what she's worried about is 
Mr. Brinkstall's clothes that were in the house. Okay, but let me get, so I'm just kind of, I'm kind of simple. I'm smarter than I sound, but I like to keep it kind of simple. <laughs> so there's an account that these two people have that they put money in. Daughter's still on the payroll because grandparents put money in there too. And then they just spend it however. I guess if they need a little more, they call grandma and grandpa, they put a little more in. And uh, all that, you know, my dad owed me a thousand dollars when I bought my first car. Every morning I'd, I'd sit and get down for breakfast on my cereal bowl, there was a steak. How much I owed that week interest and he would repo it if I did. And it was a 1967 Volkswagen Baja. It was supposed to have a sunroof, but it was a blue tarp because the sunroof. <laughs> And he let me know every month, and I had to, and I made weekly payments, including interest. And if I didn't, he told me, he would, he would have it told. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's how my mom and dad work. Okay, but I never had it repaid. I never had it told. No matter what my dad says, the day I said, "Hey, can I get twenty bucks?" Because I went and picked up lunch for us all. I paid him back, but he reminds me daily, and I'm enough to not have to get twenty dollars. But let me tell you. So this, 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 it seems like this family needs a reality check. I mean, but uh, Mr. Rosenthal, what Miss Miss Gilkinson, what is nine hundred dollars a month going to do for him? Well, Your Honor, you know, once again, the kids were. I mean, he's got a place to stay. He's paying right. that mortgage and stuff, and he makes. I mean, that can go towards the rent. I mean, the rent is twenty three hundred. He hasn't worked since his wife burned the house down. The kids, their their toys, their clothes, every last stitch of anything that was owned was gone like if you saw these pictures you'd be like oh okay uh, so i mean they had nothing he had to buy everything from the ground up for them i mean their clothes toys everything i mean he has to pay this mortgage i mean it's just he does not have the same parity and he cannot keep up with all of this without any without them having any skin in the game at all i mean Otherwise, they're just maybe he I mean, I know the houses are down. So, is he not working now? So he's on leave. It happened November the fourth. So right. it's been just over four weeks. He um he's on leave. He works for CNN. He's he's a director of the Southeast News stuff. Oh so, yeah, they're like, moving all that. Yeah. Right. So he he's on leave right now, but he is he is getting ready to go back to work, and that's going to happen definitely by the beginning of the year. But he has been not um, receiving income, I guess, for what, six weeks or whatever it is. I don't know. All right. But so if you guys go back February the 23rd, because I'm assuming Judge Farmer is going to hear something. I mean, that's only going to be $1,800 that he has. So that is what I'm saying. Is there something, what exactly does he need? Because what's $1,800 going to help him in the whole scheme of things? I guess is what I'm saying. Well, it'll certainly help him keep up with the litigation at the, the pace that this is going. I mean, you know, if you're not if you're not inclined to order child support, I would at least ask for attorney fees for this GPO. I mean, something. I mean. Well, I didn't say that. Oh, I didn't say that, but I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out in, in, in the, you know, if it's all actually going to help him, because I just, you know, well, I don't, the it'll, kids obviously are not going to do without. It'll, no, of course they won't. I mean, but it's certainly going to help, you know, I mean, the, the rent that he has of this place that he has, you know, he, he has to pay, obviously he had to pay first month and last month's rent. He had to furnish it. He had to get, you know, all new kitchen stuff. He had to get, you know, silverware. I mean, that's not cheap. That's, that's quite expensive when you're building from the ground up when, when everything you own was burned, your, your collectibles, your everything, your entire life was burned. It's coming up with a number in my head. Do you, do you both, have you both done DERPAs yet? Your Honor, I've never got their 30-day discovery. We had the 30-day on Tuesday. I've emailed opposing counsel asking for that. I've never gotten it. They have our DERPA. Um, and I can send it to Your Honor right now, but I've, I've never seen a DERPA or pay information from them. Uh, I don't have anything. All I have is a child support worksheet they sent right before the hearing today. And again, yes. Your Honor, this you know, they've never brought this up with me before. This is a, 
it, it, no, he wouldn't have went anywhere like everything else, Your Honor. I mean, and his discovery will be to them next week anyways. We served regular discovery, so now they want me to answer the mandatory plus all the regular, which is just going to be repetitive anyways, but they're going to get all of his next week. Well, I mean, I'm not. So, d d Ms. Gilgis, do you have a, uh, a DERFA? Your, Your Honor, I do not at this moment, no. My client has it, is filling it out, and knows that he has to have it back to me this weekend. I just put my email in there. Here, here's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking, and, and I'll obviously mom's probably gonna live with her parents, right, Miss Martin? Excuse me, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you for a second. Right. Mom's probably gonna live with parents, right? She, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And do you know when she's getting out of the facility? Uh, we're thinking 90 days. I mean, I don't think it'll be February. February. So she get out of February. So okay. All right. I tell you what. And I'll let you folks come back if you would like. And I'll let you come back. And I'll hear it. I mean, completely separately. But if both of y'all can. One, send me a DERFA. I'll make the temporary, I'll make the ex parte, but with you know, taking into consideration and recognizing everything that Judge Farmer put in his order. Well, you know, as far as kids and things like that. And let me see. Your Honor, I think you have my DERFA. I just want to make sure. Do I need to resend it? I think we said. Well, maybe, maybe I just put my email in there. Uh, maybe. I don't, well, here's the thing that somebody, some lawyer said my name, my email address way loud all over YouTube. YouTube oh, no. So, oh, no, that's a nightmare. No, we, Your we, Honor, I sent the uh, DERFA to you as part of the exhibits. I sent it per the rule NISI, that specific email address okay, that so is provided. Wait, it's in the Dropbox under R3. Okay. And Ms. Free, the, oh, goodness, is the special set on Monday going forward? on Monday. Did Ms. Heron just Yes, email? yes, yes. Ms. Heron emailed something. Did you see it? Was it was reset for this day. That was okay. the previous one. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have, I have one special set, and, I, and I'll leave this completely up to you folks, okay? That I can look at it in the meantime. Punt, Judge Farmer down. I'm going over there and bang on the door. <laughs> either so I can look it over have a chance to talk with um, Judge Farmer about that. And then I can see you both real shortly on the 20th that morning or it'll probably be in the after, that's a Tuesday or in the afternoon on Monday. Judge, I have an emergency hearing in Barrow County on Monday. I know, okay. yeah. So I got, and, Tuesday, I mean, I have motions at 11. It takes a little while on Tuesday, but I could do it like at nine or like okay. one o'clock. Tuesday, I have um, the second part two of a trial in Gwinnett County um, at nine o'clock on Tuesday. Who is that in front of? Judge, um, sitting for Judge uh, Bachelor, uh, John, oh gosh, I forget his name. Setzer? John, John Setzer. He's oh, sitting yeah. um, for Bachelor, yeah. So, so what, about the 20, what about the 21st? Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't have anything on Wednesday. Ms. Free, there's nothing on that 930 calendar, right? That's child support, so I'm not sure if it's just being waiting to be added on there. Oh, I think I think it is because we said it was the last one. So all I would have is that in person at one. Can, can you folks be in, because I will, I'll find you as farmer before then for sure. So if so you guys want to come back on the 21st that morning, it'll be all I have that morning. and. Uh, by then, Judge Farmer and I will sit down and have a very good conversation about all of this. And if you both send DERFAs, I'm going to sit down with him and we're both going to come up with a number. But that will remain in place, Mr. Seraph. I'll be glad I could add to that. But if you would like mom to be able, I mean, like I said, it, it could help mom if she records them. If you want them to record the conversations, if you don't have any concerns, then I'm fine. It, honestly, it's too early. I haven't even met or talked to the parties, so I don't want to opine one way or the other just yet, just to be frank with you. All right. Well, if it's something you folks want to, like I said, it either hurts people or it helps. 
If you change your mind, let me know. We can do it. So is that yeah, okay? I, you know, I can also. Uh -huh. Sorry, I no, can also ahead. just wait until February if you want for the fees portion. If, if it's you know if it's if it's a little bit, you know. Oh, it's too much for me. I don't have uh, work a night court anymore until the first of the year, and I like working. I'm on call <laughs> to see the East Point, so I, I work all the time. But this this way we'll have the dirt or the documentation you want me to look at. Then we'll sit down with Judge Farmer, and we're gonna come up with a number. Well, since it sounds like it's financial issues, it's a, is it all right if I don't attend that? Absolutely. Thank you. But if there's something that you need amended to your the order that abilities you have, do you have them communicating through our family wizard? You have access? No, they're not communicating like that, Judge. I think that any they don't. I mean, the communication is not really supposed. I'm I think saying that, if they need to at all. I mean, heaven help one of the children get sick, you know. Your Honor, we would be fine with communication through our family wizard, uh, except I just want to make sure that whatever we got to do to facilitate the FaceTime, I think he is going to have to be a part of that. Um, so, Your Honor, what time were you saying on the 21st? What works for y'all? I mean, grandparents, if, if, whoever is involved with this kid, if everybody could go through our family wizard, this is Sarah. That would be my preference. All right. So whoever gets it. Uh, so we're going to do the reset notice. We'll send it y'all in word. You guys agree on that language. What What do you guys want on the 21st? Tell me what time. Well, Your Honor, in full transparency, I'm filing a motion for attorney's fees today. So, I mean, that's going to be heard hopefully in February at the next one. So if you want to punt all of this down and just, you know, extend the ex parte with Judge Farmer's order and leave the fees out for now, uh, my client is fine with that. But I want it as to what we're going to do, because I want the wording to be right where everybody's comfortable. If the ex parte stand in place, we'll follow Judge Farmer's temporary order as far as visitation. But I'll add, and we'll add in, and I'd, I'd like you to add in, Mr. Uh, Sarah, that the parties, including grandparents, signed up for our family wizard. So there's the communication that you have full access to our family. Because there will come a time, trust me, something's going to happen. And I hope it's not anything bad when these folks need to communicate, but there is a record of the communication. So, Your Honor, you have my DERFA. Do you need anything else for Wednesday? But did you email it again? We, we can. It's in the. Yeah, if you don't mind, because I sent for, and they're, they're changing my email address, but if you if y'all send it to me now, I'll get it. Okay, we'll send you the, the DERFA and anything else you need for Wednesday. Yeah, anything else y'all want me to know as far as uh, money. Okay. You know, and Miss Free. Yes, Your Honor. So, um, if y'all put your emails in the link, Ms. Fr who's going to supposed to be responsible for um, the language about uh, following Judge Farmer's order? I'm sorry. Uh, did you say who would be responsible for that? Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to draft your. Um, okay. So we're going to so just email it to Ms. Gilkinson and a copy of Ms. Uh, Martin. And what we'll do is we'll send you our reset notice. Change the Zoom link. Just put whatever language is going to be comfortable to y'all about following Judge Farmer's order, and I'll print off a copy of it, and we'll attach that, and then we'll file it. So, Durfer, whatever you want me to consider for finances, and then we'll do Wednesday. I think we never got a time. What got? What time do you folks want? Because it'll be on Zoom. Y'all don't have to come down here. Oh, okay, I, I've got an eleven o'clock appointment, so. You know, nine or nine thirty would be preferable. Nine a.m. That work for you, Ms. Gilkinson. Nine is fine, Your Honor. All right, look at that. Now we're cooking. Just, to, just to clarify, so I'll have my client serve to you um, as soon as I get it from him, and I've already told him I need it. Like I said, this weekend. So oh, I'm going to email that to you on Monday. But did you you the TPO? You you want to use the form based TPO? Is that right? And just put the language and then attach the order. No, what we're sending you is my reset notice that says everything remains in place and it's reset to this day. And then you can put, however, <laughs> you know, visitation as a, you know, you know, as far as visitation with the children, et cetera, please refer to um, everything set out in Judge Farmer's order. But I want to make sure that everybody agrees on that, that we all know that's what that means. Okay. So okay. everything in the, every, 
Everything in the ex parte order remains in place except for you can either say see Judge Farmer's order or yeah. whatever, the, except for the provisions and you can cut and paste the provisions in Judge Farmer's order that you want to know. If someone were to call 911 and, and Deputy Friendly looks at it and goes, no, nope, this says the child, you can see the judge. Let me know. I mean, I'll I'll make sure. being, a, being an attachment is fine. Okay, you can be an attachment. So do you just want me to say see Judge Farmer's order? And, and use it as an exhibit. I mean, that's that's probably the clearest. We'll do that. We'll reset it, and we're just going to put see Judge Farmer's order. Good Thank enough for me. But I have an understanding that we're not in violation of the ex parte order if we we follow Judge Farmer's order. That's what we're all saying. Oh, that's what I'm wanting to make sure. Right. If y'all want certain words, except for except for changing the thing. I mean, I'll figure out something. Say see Judge Farmer's order as far as visitation. Grandparents' visitation and mom's visitation with the children, the judge farmers. And, 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 mom's, con and mom's contact with children because the ex parte. Right, and contact per judge farmers order will not be a violation of this. Of the, of the, of the ex parte. And, yeah. you're, and you're extending the ex parte until when? Well, at least be extended until. Uh, hmm. I'll talk to judge farmer, but it'll still be in place. Because oh, me and Judge Farmer are going to have a nice little conversation this afternoon. <laughs> and Judge, to be to be clear, Mr. Browning, I know, has already sent Miss Martin an email as well, stating that any FaceTime or visitation pursuant to what the judge order would not be a violation, and we understand that. So I mean, we've already okay, put that out thing. there. So if there's something that y'all want to say, <laughs> that's good. That's what I said. I'm going to say it remains in place, with the exception of. The provisions in Judge Farmer's order dated January, I mean, December the 15th, 2022, be attached. So that works for, for Mr. Ribbenthal. That works for him. All right. So now Officer Friendly's going to have to read it. So that means if I, I tell you what, I can make you promise this that if somebody calls the police because somebody makes a FaceTime call and they say they're violating it, take an Uber down here sit in my courtroom because I promise you you make some report like that and say somebody's violated and they're not going to go to Rice Street. I say Uber because you park over here your car may get broken into and it's $17 a day and you're going to sit in Rice Street for 20 days. You don't believe me? Ask people. Understood. Thank you, so, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so I'll see, and Miss, uh, so put your emails in the chat. Miss Free is going to send you the reset notice in the link. I just, I just put it off. I'm going to see, I'm going to put an attachment, exhibit A. Thank now, you. Now, which Judge. one of y'all are going to represent me if me and Judge Farmer get in the fight? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> driving. Yeah, we got a problem. Yeah. I'm going to go down and uh, film this at uh, Farmer's Car, and we'll, we'll see how, how many views we get on TikTok. <laughs> exactly. And uh, counsel, uh, Ms. McCauley, I'm sure she'll send me whatever she needs me to sign. So just tell her that I'm familiar, and I'm sure she'll send it to me. All Have right. a good weekend. Thank you All very right. much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, very much. Have a good one. Y'all stay healthy and safe. Have a good holiday and a good week. I'll see y'all Wednesday. Bye. 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 Bye.